Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Well, it certainly doesn't help us after the fact um, with that type of video, the quality of video. Another armed robbery in rural Minnesota. This time it was a bank in Hitterdahl, Minnesota. With few people around in such a small town, the challenges are only beginning for the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Deputies released surveillance pictures of the suspect, but the limitations of the equipment certainly show. They describe the suspect as a white man, slender in build and at least 30 years old. Deputies say he was wearing a dark colored jacket and jeans and had a long gun when he demanded money from the teller. The person in white you see in this picture was a customer in the bank at the time. And they're looking for a dark colored car that the man fled in. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric spent the afternoon on the scene in Hitterdahl and has our report. I talked to one neighbor who lives across the street from the State Bank of Lake Park here in Hitterdahl. He said he didn't even know that the bank had been robbed. He looked out the window and the place was crawling with police. The Clay County Sheriff's Office says the call came in just before noon that somebody had made off with an undisclosed amount of cash. And as the first news crew on scene, authorities had a tight seal on the area. We believe that he was on foot um, then then exited a vehicle. Uh, some blocks away. We did call out our canine officer and it uh, produced a track to a location where a vehicle had left the scene. But the real challenge is the video surveillance or lack of it. The bank has a video camera system, but it uses VHS tapes, is only black and white, and only takes a picture once every four seconds. So investigators got a shot when the suspect comes in and when he leaves. Anything to help us out, um, just give us something to follow up on. Um, what, what we have is very limited information, um, and we're, we're following up on what leads we've already discovered. The only other images deputies could find was from Hitterdahl Liquors, a block away. And this video is believed to show the suspect's getaway vehicle. In Hitterdahl, Minnesota, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. The Clay County Sheriff says if you saw anyone suspicious driving around town just before noon today to give them a call. Deputies say based on their evidence, the suspect appeared to know what he was doing. This same bank in Hitterdahl was robbed in 2007. We've uncovered some shocking numbers related to heroin use with help from the North Dakota Department of Human Services. The number of people being treated for addiction and heroin use has skyrocketed over 1,000 percent over the past two years. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us what's happening and what's being done to combat this serious health crisis. North Dakota heroin addiction numbers are staggering. In July of 2013, just 17 North Dakotans were being treated for addiction problems that include heroin usage every month at the Department of Human Services counseling centers. By last December, that number rose to 198. Nearly 200 people every month are now being treated for addiction problems that include heroin. All the young people that are shooting up, it's, you know, and listening to them talk about the process like well I'm with my dealer and you know it's like he's giving me lessons how to shoot up and how you know like this whole instruction thing that's and these kids can be how young are you seeing? 15 16 17 18 and Davis says the most shocking thing about what's happening on the streets of North Dakota is that many of the new heroin users aren't the usual chronic abusers who finally give in to heroin their users who now start with heroin as their drug of choice. Definitely around the state. The other issue comes in, we're seeing a lot more women, pregnant women using. Davis says heroin is available and it's cheap. She says it's left them with a shortage of counselors across the state and looking for new ways to treat the growing number of users. But we're really having to, to study our programs and look at a more recovery management model for treating this as a chronic disease, not just acute care all the time. And as we earlier reported, drug overdoses are now claiming more lives in the valley than car accidents, according to the coroner's office in Grand Forks. Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Davis says another part of the overall problem is that meth isn't currently as readily available as heroin. North Dakota laws have made it tougher for users to buy the ingredients needed to make meth. An 18-year-old from Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, is facing charges for forwarding nude pictures of a 16-year-old girl to two others. 
The 16-year-old admitted to sending nude pictures of herself to a male and also 18-year-old Stephanie Johnson Jonathan. Johnson Jonathan admitted to receiving the pictures and says she forwarded them on to two other students because she was mad at the 16-year-old girl. Johnson Jonathan now faces a felony charge of disseminating pornographic work and if found guilty could get up to seven years in prison or a $10,000 fine. Detroit Lakes Police are weighing in on this case. Hear from them tonight on Valley News Live at 6. If you're traveling east or south of here, you'll want to be on alert. Here's a live weather shot from our sister station, KGIN-TV, in Grand Island, Nebraska. That's the south central part of the state. There's a blizzard warning there. Roads are closed. There are high winds, blowing snow. And you'll run into the same type of trouble if you're heading to Minneapolis. Around here, a few light flurries. Here's Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson with a look at the forecast. Hutch? Yes, yeah, certainly a lot of weather around our region to talk about. In fact, this storm's so huge, it's impacting weather across much of the eastern half of the United States. From Omaha, as you showed in Nebraska, to Minneapolis, blizzard-like conditions are reported. We have actual multiple tornadoes down in the Gulf Coast states, Mississippi and Alabama bracing for some of that. Heavy bands of snow focusing on the Twin Cities right now, where we've gotten reports of four to 10 inches of snow on the ground already, and it will continue to snow this evening. And North Sioux City, Iowa, with a foot of snow, and the wind will be increasing as we head to the evening. If you do have travel plans, make sure that you download the Valley News Live weather app to, and make sure that you have the very latest in front of you. A blizzard warning continues tonight for southern Minnesota. For us, we do have a few flakes in the area north of Fargo, Moorhead, out toward Castleton. A little accumulation here in the south side of town to the tune of two ten of an inch, so certainly our neighbors well to the south have more to contend with. Richland County seeing a band of snow, and tonight I think we'll have on and off flurries with temperatures in the 20s and teens, and that's about it for this storm for us. I'll have details on what you can expect in your hour-by-hour -hour forecast for the area, as well as a look ahead towards a warmer weekend here in a moment. All right, thank you, Hutch. Mm -hmm. The Fargo Police Department is notifying the public about a high-risk sex offender living in the area. According to police, Ramon Martinez is currently homeless in Fargo. Martinez was convicted in 2001 and 2007 for uh, both for corruption of a minor. His victims were acquaintances, one 15, the other 16 years old. He is a lifetime registrant. The man wanted by police in Fargo and Moorhead since yesterday is now behind bars. The Cass County Jail says Josh Ashenko was booked into the jail about 10 last night. He's facing several charges, including shoplifting, failure to appear, theft of a motor vehicle, and violation of the 24-7 program. Moorhead police say that the Metro Street Crime Unit has been working to find Ashenko for several days. The Super Bowl is a great excuse to buy a new television. Big screens to watch the big game have never been cheaper. You can get a 65-inch 1080p high-definition TV for under $1,000. Our partners at Consumer Reports say although Ultra HD TVs are on the market, a regular HD set is still a great choice, especially since the game's not being broadcast in 4K Ultra HD this year. The experts say for the big game, a screen that's 50 inches or bigger is a good choice. But it's also important to have a wide viewing angle. Yep. This is where an OLED TV comes in handy. Both HD sets and UHD models have unlimited viewing angles. And that means that everyone in your room is going to get a great view of the game, no matter where they're sitting. Consumer Reports has several recommendations for good deals on big screen TVs available now. The experts say to check out an Ultra HD OLED. The 55-inch set from LG costs $3,000 and is one of Consumer Reports' highest rated TVs. Consumer Reports also recommends 55-inch HD models from Samsung and Sony, both $800. If you're looking for a bigger, there's a 65-inch Sony Bravia for $1,500 and an Ultra HD Panasonic for $1,700. The Panthers and Broncos play Sunday in the NFL title game. You can watch it on KX4. Kickoff is set for 5.30 p.m. on Sunday. One local child is setting an example and trying to make a difference for others. Meet Matthias Dollinger. He opened his piggy bank and his heart contributing the $100 he had saved up to the YMCA's Partner of Youth campaign. 
That's a program that allows the Y to provide scholarships for things like swimming lessons, camp, basketball, and child care. Matthias received a scholarship last year to Camp Cormorant, and he wanted to give back. His mom says the experience really helped him develop social skills and confidence. Just the level of maturity and how he was able to express himself differently and with more confidence. And um, it was just, I thought I picked up the wrong kid. I mean, he literally had kind of gone through his own coming of age. But Matthias isn't alone in his contribution. The workers at the heat transfer warehouse also chipped in $10,000 toward the campaign's $325,000 goal.